We now bring you live coverage from the Action People's Party Senatoria Rally in Port Harcourt River State. The news continues on our other channels as well as on YouTube. Let's uh, bring you some updates as regards um, the position of the Nigeria military. We spoke earlier with um, former private um, Ogune as regards our allegation against the colonel within the ranks. I know definitely they will come for me. They will lock me up and they will dismiss me. I don't care. It's nine months since Private Ruth Ogunleye released her first video on social media alleging her superior officers, Colonel I.B. Abdul Karim, Colonel G.S. Ogo, and Brigadier General I.B. Sholebo made life hell for her. She specifically accused Colonel Abdul Karim of making repeated attempts to assault her, administering injections against her will, forcibly removing her from her residence, and confining her to a psychiatric hospital for several months after she rejected his sexual advances. The Nigerian Army authorities investigated the matter and came up with conclusions. The investigation con concluded that Colonel I.B. Abdul Karim did not commit the offense of sexual harassment as alleged by ex-private Ruth Ogunleye. The findings were definitive and based on objective evaluation of the available information. The Army maintains that Colonel I.B. Abdul Karim is a disciplined, regimented, and firm officer who has upheld the values of the Nigerian Army throughout his service. We gather that Private Ruth Ogunle is no longer in service. She was discharged on 14 June with benefits she was not entitled to. Ex-Private Ruth Ogunleye had been recommended for discharge on medical grounds since 2022. But the Nigerian army, being sympathetic to its own, thought it wise to give her the best medical treatment possible. The medical evaluation confirmed that ex-private Ruth Ogunleye was suffering from a condition that made her medically vulnerable. The decision was made to shelve any disciplinary procedures that could have been brought against her. Instead, the Army prioritized her health, understanding that she was in no position to continue with military service. She was subsequently boarded and discharged from service. While the Army is seeking closure in the case, Ms. Ogunleye appears unwilling to let go. C4 ACN TVC News, Abu. I know definitely they will come. The Commissioner of Police in Lagos, Isha has warned criminals to have a change of attitude or face the wrath of the law. He said that this during his meeting press briefing in Lagos. Senior correspondent Ivy Kano has more. This appeared to be a harvest of suspects at the command headquarters. Everyone, the Commissioner of Police will be coming down. Over 90 of them, the CP says, were arrested for various crimes across the state. I give a much in order to all my policemen that Lagos should, in a matter of a week, have a feel of what it is to have practical policing put in place. A 21 year old girl was kidnapped with a ransom of 10 million naira placed on her head. The operative of my command swung into action. After a little gun route, we liberated women on us. I'll pick them as, as a wake up, as a wake up, wake up girls. When they will go here, I'll not tell them to, to, to release their phone for me. They'll not give me their phone. Okay. That's all. How many times have you done it? It's just three times. The number of those paraded may be high, but it's stated that more investigation will be carried out. The people we have here today, they are still undergoing screening. We want to establish their level of involvement and their culpability. It is not all that make it to court. He has a word of warning for criminals in the state. I will not tell them to relocate. It's like pushing your truck to underman's territory. I will deal with them in house here. I send the turnover a new leaf. I'm having a meeting with uh, the National Union of uh, Transport Workers and the Ritian sometimes next week. One of the things I'm going to tell them is that all their bosses must be tagged and marked whereby whoever enters whatever boss, 
you know the boss, he or she enters. Items recovered are charms, 10 firearms, 41 life ammunition, 12 phones, one vehicle, US dollars, substances suspected to be hard drugs, axes, hammer, and others. Ivy Kano, TVC News, Lagos. To ensure drastic reduction in maternal debts and neonatal complications, stakeholders in the health sector must scale up innovations and back on continuous sensitization, as well as adopt the reforms agenda set up by the Minister for Health. These are the submissions by industry experts at a high-level stakeholders meeting on neonatal health innovations. The statistics on maternal neonatal mortality in Nigeria has been far from encouraging, despite recent interventions. Even though there is massive decrease in other countries of the world, the situation that is not just worrying but requires an all-inclusive action. We need to have this at the back of our minds, that our focus should really be on making sure we get to zero. Zero maternal deaths, zero um, neonatal deaths, zero child deaths, zero illnesses, and it is doable, so let's not leave anyone behind. The representative of Lagos State Government says it recognizes the role of partners in maternal and child health and places emphasis on the role they are playing to match the expectations of the people. Collaboration is the key. It's the key. So I'm always excited when I see these kind of programs because we're, we all have the same objective, to keep them healthy, to stop death, which, as you know, I wouldn't say we are worse off but we're still we still have a lot to do some of you already know that um, mr governor is giving free antenatal um, care to all pregnant women up until delivery when they deliver whether it's cesarean whether it's normal delivery it's free one of the important points raised in this meeting are the role of political leaders religious leaders and most importantly medical personnel in ensuring a safer society approach to maternal and neonatal health interventions needs to change. It needs to be um, multi-sectoral and it needs to be cohesive, involving um, all the different partners and stakeholders. You see a patient in need, you see someone who needs health care, and you say your shift has not started or your shift has ended. It, it's, it's, I can, you see how you're feeling. It, it's unheard of. And so if there's any doctor doing that, please desist from that. It is not ethical. As long as you're a doctor, you have taken an oath to save lives. Even when you are not on duty, you should volunteer to work, to help. The forum was attended by health experts from both the government and private sector, as well as opinion leaders and NGOs. Air Media Jake by TVC News, Lagos. About 150 households who are victims of flood have benefited from food and cash assistance to help them keep up before they return to their homes. This gesture is to complement effort of government as the situation becomes increasingly complex. Jesse Tafida has more. Victims of the Maiduguri flood disaster. Tens of thousands are forced out of their homes due to flood waters in Maiduguri, the Bruno state capital. As temporary camps are overcrowded, some victims are stranded within the city. They lost nearly everything in the floods. Most of them are still struggling to make ends meet with little assistance. But today, help has come their way. A humanitarian group comes to this location bearing gifts of food items and cash. I am excited because one of the, the motto of Linkway Outreach actually is to keep the people smiling. And why is it so? Because out of their need, you are able to meet it to an extent, which is supposed to put a smile on their face. So seeing them smile actually makes me excited. For me, just the thought that I thought of this and now it's a reality that somebody is meeting their need makes me happy. We felt that at least there are some things we will not be able to buy. Onions and some of those stuff, charcoal, the pure water, they could just a small stipend to support that uh, what we have given them. Mama Asabe is lucky to be part of today's beneficiaries. 
She narrates how the flood water washed away her home. She said everything happened so quick. When I heard my neighbors shouting that night, before I could check out what was happening, my house was already submerged. We struggled to find our way out through the waters together with my children. I lost everything, including my house. But this gesture today has indeed put a smile on our faces. Just as Mama Asabe, other women taking refuge at roadside also took part in today's humanitarian gesture. As government and development partners continue to put hands on deck to support victims of the flood, other organizations and philanthropists have taken steps to complement this effort. Jesse Tafida, TVC News, Iduguri. And farmers in five communities of Gasol local government area of Taraba State have stated.